Let's look at an example of using a phased lead controller. My plant is here 1 over s times quantity s plus 2. My specifications are phase margin greater than 45. So remember, somewhere in the range of 60 to 90 is a damping ratio of 0.7. So this is still a fairly small damping ratio. And I want a steady state error to ramp to be less than 5%. The first thing I'm going to do is address the steady state error to a ramp. If you look at the system, this is a type 1 system, so it will have no steady state error to a step input if we put it in a unity feedback. But if we put a ramp input in, then we will have some steady state error. And that steady state error, or the amount of that steady state error, is controlled by the total gain of the system. So the first thing I can do is just design the gain of the system. So I'm going to write just a simple proportional feedback here. This is the open loop plant with proportional feedback with some gain. I want to know what value of k do I have to have in order to satisfy this ramp error. So proceed with the math and I get this. So based on my definition of kv, I can calculate out what the value for kv would be in terms of my gain k. It's k over 2. Based on my definition for kv and the steady state error for a ramp, I have this relation here. The steady state error for a ramp is 1 over kv, which my spec is less than 0.5, so I'm just going to set it at the limit of 0.05. That means kv needs to be 20, and so k needs to be 40. Again, this means that if I have this plant right here in unity feedback, and I set k is equal to 40, that the ramp error will be less than 5%. The next I want to do is design to achieve the phase margin. I've quickly done the Bode plot for this. I use the same technique we used to do an estimate of the Bode plot. So you figure out what the DC gain is, you plot that, then you plot the value of the pole at zero and the value of the pole at two, and then add those results together and you'll get a graph that looks like this. We want to know what the gain and phase margin are for the system. Let's see, the gain margin is infinite because the system never crosses 180 and that's no surprise it's only a second order system. Phase margin which is right here this is where it crosses zero so the phase margin is this much right here somewhere around 18 degrees for the phase margin. I want the phase margin to be greater than 45 but I don't want to just simply reduce the gain of the system. You can see if I just lowered the gain of the system, that would bring the purple curve down, just the gain curve, and the new curve might look something like that. Well, now the phase margin has increased. However, increasing the phase margin at a cost of reducing the gain, reducing the gain changes the value for kV and increases my steady state error to a ramp. So I am restricted in my design. I need to hold the DC gain the same, but I need to add some phase. That's the job of a phase lead controller. It has a DC gain of 1, so it doesn't affect low frequency gain, doesn't affect the value of KV, but it adds in a phase shift. What you do sacrifice is gain at higher frequencies. It actually adds some gain at a higher frequency. I'm going to roughly sketch in what a phase lead controller would look like. The light blue line is a possible phase lead controller. The resulting system will be the combination of the purple line and the blue line. Now I'll tell you right now, the light blue line is not the correct one. I haven't designed it yet. But see what happens. In terms of the gain, the new system would do something like this. It would stay where it was till here. And then we have a 40 dB and a 20 dB slope. This is at minus 40 dB. The blue line is at plus 20 dB, so the net result is somewhere in between. That's the yellow line. And then once I get back to this point, I'm back down to a minus 40 dB per decade slope. So I have pushed the crossover out a little bit. But if you look at the phase, I'm adding this phase, which is the original system. And now I've had to put a zero here because my scaling started at minus 90. And the actual phase lead controller goes from zero up. So I add this and my resulting phase is going to do something like that. So at the crossover point, you can see I now have a better phase margin. Now here's the design piece that you have to be careful of. You can specify the amount of phase margin that you want to increase. That's pretty easy just by specifying A. The problem is specifying A also gives you this curve here. It also increases the gain increasing the gain about the center point tends to push the curve out. So 
I'm no longer concerned about the phase at this point right here. I'm now concerned about the phase at this point right here. And you can see the phase margin here is a little bit less than the phase margin is here. So we need to design a phase lead controller. You can't just say, okay, here's the phase margin. I want to add this amount of phase at this frequency because adding the phase margin will push the crossover point out and likely decrease the total phase margin that you have. Thus, you have to add in more phase margin. So you'll see how to do that. I'm going to fudge the numbers a little bit. Well, let's just start with 18. I'm going to say let's add another 30 degrees of phase in. That'll get me up to 48 degrees and I only need 45. So I'm already fudging it a little bit. Based on that number, I can calculate A. A value is 3. This gives me the width of the controller. Now I need to know the center point for the controller. To do that, I'm going to use this formula where the center frequency is 1 over the square root of a t, and t is the other parameter that I need for the controller. I need to figure out what center frequency I want to use. Again, it's tempting just to use the crossover point right here, but really you should push it out a little bit. Now, I'm doing this sketch by hand, so I can't get very accurate reads of this crossover point. You could do this in MATLAB with the SISO tools and get a much better read on what the crossover points are and the actual phase margin. So I'm just going to guess this is somewhere around 6, so I'm going to shoot, say, let's push it out to about 8. Once I've calculated the value for t, I can then calculate the zero and pole locations. The pole location is 1 over a t, 4.6. The zero location will be 1 over t, 13.8. That's what I expect. A pole occurs and then a zero occurs. The total gain for the system will be 9.6 with a center gain of half that, 4.8. So I'm going to try and sketch in this curve. Now I'm going to erase the blue, which is my estimate, and then sketch in the purple. Now I've carefully sketched in what the phase lead controller would look like. Here's my zero, That's I mean my pole that starts at 4.6. Then I go 20 dB per decade until I get to 13.8. Be careful when you measure this here. This is 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, so 13 is just barely on the other side of the 10 mark with a total gain of 9.6, so there's my 20 dB per decade. That looks about right, and I get just above 10 dB. That's the additional gain that the phase lead controller will add in, and then it adds in 30 degrees of phase at that center point, and now I need to add together the dark purple and the light purple lines, and my approximation looks like this. And now my new phase margin is something like that, which looks like I'm better than 45, somewhere around 50. Of course, I'm just sketching that in, but that looks like it satisfies the constraints. So this is how you would do a phase lead controller by hand. Of course, you should probably do this in MATLAB so that you can get better estimates of the actual values. Final thing to do is just write down the value for the controller, and it's this. 40 is the gain that I need that I calculated from the required steady state error for a ramp. And here's the location of the zero and the pole that I calculated previously.